So of all the hype over the new series Shogun, I know that now a lot of people are looking for some good samurai movies to watch. And instead of just telling you about the same list as everyone else, I want to tell you about some underrated gems. And even though these are underrated, I'll say they're just as good, if not better than the ones that you always hear about. And if you want to own or watch any of these movies, you can get all of them on SamuraiDVD.com. And for watching this video, you can use the code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout. That way you get yourself a nice discount. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get straight to it. So the 47 Ronin is probably Japan's most famous story. It's the perfect example of heroism and honor. But it was also a true story. And if you want the best movie just showing this event, there's quite a few but The Fall of Akko Castle I believe does it the best. And this isn't the most action-packed movie, though you probably shouldn't be watching samurai movies if you want action, that's just a heads up. But this is a long film, it's just under 3 hours, and the first 2 hours do involve only a few fights. But it's not really a big issue because this story is fascinating, because it is true. But the last 45 minutes of this film is just a giant battle. And actually a lot of it was choreographed by Sonny Chiba himself. Anyway, this film, when you watch it, it's just really well made. And it's also directed by Kinji Fukusaku, that's the same director that gave us Battle Royale and some of the best Yakuza movies ever. And it also has some just heavy hitter actors, Sonny Chiba, Toshiro Mifune. Anyway, it's a great film, but it is a bit overstuffed. There's a lot going on in it. But if you're interested in knowing the story of the 47 Ronin, skip the Keona Reeves one and watch this. This is the best movie about that event. And next we have Samurai's Promise. And this is a 2018 movie. And its director used to be the cinematographer who worked with Akira Kurosawa. So when you watch it, the visuals very much look like a Kurosawa film. And this is just a beautiful looking film. And there's just many shots of nature, and it really likes to highlight just the four seasons of the Japanese countryside. And also just the acting in this is just quite good, it's very natural. And it's free of that almost anime, overly dramatic acting that you see in many modern Japanese films. Here the acting is closer to the classic Kurosawa, or even Hollywood. And the music too, I have to mention, it's quite good. It is different though, it sounds almost western. And I could swear that they play the Godfather theme, or at least it's something very similar. Somehow it works though. I'm gonna make him an offer, but again, the film is a bit on the slower pace side. It's very calm and quiet. Similar to Twilight Samurai or any of the other Shuhi Fujisawa adaptations. And the narrative is a little confusing, but I will say it does pay off in the end. This has one of the greatest final standoffs. It's unforgettable. And I'm pretty surprised it's not mentioned more. And real fast, the story of this follows a skilled samurai. And he comes back to his hometown and he finds his wife dead, and then we find out that he was gone because he was exiled. And actually he was implicated in a bit of a financial and even romantic scandal. And this broke up the friendship of four friends who used to study together since childhood. And he must now face all this also while coping with his wife's death. So it's a serious story, but it does get quite good and it's interesting. Definitely check this one out. And next we have Ronin Guy. So this is definitely a hidden gem. And it's a pretty simple story. It follows these four misfit Ronin and they're fighting to protect the local brothel. It's sort of like the anti-7th samurai. But it's actually a really fun film. 
And I always think of my friend Jay Tilton with this one because he's the one that first told me about it. He said that he enjoyed it because it was basically the story about misfits. And none of the characters are really likable. But that's what kind of works about it. And no matter how many of these movies you watch, this one will always stand out. And it's because it's sort of a strange comedy. It's like a comedy hybrid. And it just has these very different and odd characters. And again, just one very satisfying finale. And if there ever was a hidden gem, it would definitely be this one. So definitely check it out. And next we have Hidokiri. So Shintaro Katsu, Tatsuya Nakadai, and Yukio Mishima all in one film. And that should be enough to just make you want to watch it. And there's just something about this film that you can't really explain. And I just remember the first time I watched it, I just really couldn't stop thinking about it. I think I watched it again straight after that. And maybe it's just the mystique around it. The fact that it has Yukio Mishima in it. It sort of gives it this eeriness. And that's just because of the stigma around that actor. If you can look him up, they even made a movie about him. He's pretty interesting. But I'll say that Hidokiri is definitely one of Gosha's best films. In fact, it might be one of the best samurai chambara films ever made. But be warned before you watch it because it is sort of a complicated story. There's a lot of different intricate plot details that you really have to pay attention to. And it could definitely be hard to follow if you're just unfamiliar with 19th century Japanese history. But I'll say it's definitely worth it just for its dark atmosphere. It's also got some great bloody combat. And of course just its legendary cast. And next we have The Return, also known as Kikyo. So The Return in many ways it's like its title. It's the return of Tatsuya Nakadai. And there's something great about just seeing him at an old age just playing the same roles that he always did. And I just found this movie just really emotional. And it's because he's one of my favorite actors of all time. And I pretty much grew up watching his Akira Kurosawa films. Also just watching him in movies like Harakiri, Samurai Rebellion. He's been in so much stuff. But here he really shows how age can mean nothing. You could still be a badass in your 90s. And in the film he plays this older Yakuza member. And he's returning to his hometown for one last mission. And the rest you just have to watch to see for yourself. It's very emotional. It's also really well made. It's actually a TV movie but you would never know that. It's just a stunning performance by one of the greatest actors of all time. I often put this one in my top lists. And just like everything on this list, it's unfortunately not well known enough. And next we have Burugaki Unbroken Samurai. And this is set in the chaotic years leading up to the Meiji Restoration of 1868. And this depicts the rise and fall of the notorious Shin Sengumi. So I remember when this film was coming out, we were waiting a while, and it was cited as being the greatest samurai movie in years. And after just finally being able to watch it translated, I gotta say I can't disagree. This is a big, well-produced epic of a film. And it has that very polished historical drama look to it. And I really just like this one a lot, especially just how it shows sort of the rise and fall of the Shinsengumi and sort of the bad things that they were doing. It teaches you a lot, it's educational. And I really like the protagonist in this. And it's interesting because we follow the second in command to the Shinsengumi. And he was a pretty interesting character. But the actor really just does such a great job playing him. So definitely check this one out, 
especially if you're just into that time period with the Shinsengumi, because that really is just an interesting time. It was very chaotic, there was a lot going on. And it was the same time period that Roroni Kenshin took place in. And I'll also add that this movie has some great big scale battle sequences. And also just some great sword fights and even sparring. A lot of good stuff in this, definitely don't miss it. And next we have Sword of Desperation. So there's actually a lot of samurai films that like to focus on the harsh practices of Bushido. But Sword of Desperation takes that concept to another level. And it's just a really captivating story. It's similar to Hurakiri, and it's also an adaptation of a Shuhi Fujisawa. And Fujisawa adaptations are always good, so if you ever see that name attached to anything, just see it. Don't even question it. And the script with this one, it actually unfolds with two different time frames. And they both focus on this captain of a powerful daimyo. And right in the beginning, we witness him killing his lord's concubine. And we're not really sure why. And for some reason, he only gets a minor punishment for doing this. He gets house arrest for one year. And then we get a time jump, and it takes place in the past. And what it does is it answers all the questions that lead up to that. And it kind of also lets you put some things together. So it's really just interesting how this film is set up and how you kind of have to put some things together yourself. And it's just really well made. And again, it is on the slow side like most of Fujisawa's adaptations. But it also culminates in one of the greatest duels ever filmed. And this fight blew me away the first time I saw it. Because when it finally takes place, it's just sudden and it's captivating. And my only real problem with the film is that there is a few cultural things that I didn't fully understand. But even so, I just really enjoyed it. Definitely check it out. And next we have Uzumasa Limelight. And this one's interesting because it's not really a samurai movie, but it's more so a movie about samurai movies. And what's also interesting is it's sort of a remake of a Charlie Chaplin film. And the story is about this older actor, and he specializes in samurai films. Except he specializes in playing the guy who gets killed in the film, usually by the main actor. And apparently this is a specialist job, and he's a specialist in doing this. And no one could die in the sword fight as acrobatically or dramatically as he does but at age 70 he's getting too old for the job and he's sadly reduced to just being a street performer and he finds himself being the teacher of this young extra who wants to be an actress and it's just an interesting concept of both old and young old teaching the young and sort of just moving on and what I like about this movie is that it brings to light a member that's involved with film that isn't very well known. We all know about actors, stars, and directors. But what about the smaller parts in films that are just as important? And just after watching this, I'm never going to view the guy who dies in the sword fight the same way. Now I know that there's an artistic level to it. So this is really just a love letter to the genre, but also just the film itself, and especially to everyone involved. And all parts come together, both big and small, to create something great. And next we have After the Rain. This is the 1999 film, not to be confused with the anime. So in 1993, director Akira Kurosawa made his final film, which was Matadeo. And after this, he would leave the director's chair. This was after he suffered an injury to his spine. And this forced him to spend the final years of his life in a wheelchair. And just after decades of filmmaking, 
His career as a director had finally come to an end. Yet he wasn't done just yet, at least artistically. He still remains active as a screenwriter. But unfortunately, things would worsen, and in the following years, his health just gradually declines. And this would more and more restrict him from being creative. But on September 6, 1999, Akira Kurosawa passed away of a stroke. And this was the death of just this legendary filmmaker. Internationally, people were mourning. However, his legacy would continue to live on. And this was just thanks to the overwhelming praise from his audience. And just many of the people that worked with Akira Kurosawa, they went on to honor him. And one such movie was made to be based on Akira Kurosawa's last screenplay. And it would eventually be brought to life in the samurai film After the Rain. And After the Rain is Takashi Koizumi's directorial debut. And before this, he worked as an assistant director on various Kurosawa films. This included Kagamusha and Ron. And what's beautiful about After the Rain is it's an example of an apprentice following in the footsteps of his teacher. And at the same time though, it also honors his teacher's legacy. And when you watch this movie, it just looks and feels like a Kurosawa film. And for me, this is just a comfort movie. If I ever just want to just relax and watch something beautiful, I'll just put this film in. I'll even pause it at certain moments to just admire it. It's almost like a moving painting. And I also just really like its quiet and calm pacing. Again, a lot of these movies are like this on this list. That's just what I'm into. But because it's such a calm film, when it actually does have a sword fight, it's a lot more powerful. And actually leaves an impact on you. And this just has some of the greatest fight choreography. And it actually uses real Budo techniques. And I've even heard of martial arts schools using this film to actually teach. Anyway, this is an absolute must watch. Definitely check it out. And last on the list, we have At River's Edge. So, At River's Edge is this little film that I've really been hyping up on my channel for a few years now. And it's another Shuhi Fujisawa adaptation. And by now you know I love his adaptations, they're always good. And unfortunately no one in the world has seen this movie, and that amazes me. And what I love about this film so much is that it's simple, but it does a lot with its simplicity. And its message is simple, it's basically that it's hard to be a samurai. A life where at any moment's notice, you might have to make a really hard decision. And it could even mean death. And the story is about this very skilled samurai. And he gets ordered to kill his best friends. And they send him because he's the only one that's skilled enough to defeat him. But there's also more to it. His sister is married to his best friend, and she was also trained by the same master growing up, which is her father. But also, the friends traveling with the main character happens to be in love with his sister. So when it comes down to it, his friends might also be drawing his sword at him too. And I just think this is such a captivating premise it's not overly complicated, but it's interesting. And throughout the film, you're not confused, you know exactly what's going on. But how it turns out, you may not expect. And it's just filled with some great characters, and they really just carry the film. But I especially just really like the main actor. I wish this guy was in more stuff. I've only seen him in two things. But to me, he embodies what I believe a man should be like. And that's when you're faced with a hard decision, you just do it, you don't complain. And I also just love the cinematography. 
I think it's just a beautiful looking film. And I especially just really like the music. It's really great. And out of all these Shuhi Fujisawa adaptations, this one is my favorite. And it just has everything I love about his stories. The quietness, they're peaceful, yet they're engaging. And they have all this great drama going on. And they always pay it off with a great fight at the end. And this film is hard to find. In fact, all the films on this list are pretty hard, but you could get all of them on SamuraiDVD.com. And you could get a discount on them by using the code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout. Anyway, that was my list of the most underrated Samurai films. And I didn't include the obvious ones that are on every list. You know, Hurakiri, Samurai Rebellion, Sword of Doom, Lone Wolf and Cub, pretty much every Akira Kurosawa samurai film. Those films you should already know about. But once you've seen all those, then you have these really great ones to also check out. Anyway, let me know in the comments any ones I missed. And like always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.